Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching Battlestar Galactica. Hey guys, well, welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching episode six of season four, five, four, season four, episode six, six, six. Six. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, anyway, here we are back from the previous episode, which was ended with a to be continued, which hurt me. It really hurt me. Um, I'm kind of getting used to them by now. And thankfully, they're not ending on like cliffhangers where I'm like, no, I'm just kind of like, all right, I got to watch the next one. All right. So, I mean, really, the whole the whole crew of the Demetrius pulling a mutiny, you know, and I think, I think Starbuck handles it a lot better by relieving people of duty rather than shooting them. But I also think they're mildly right. She's not right. I want them to trust her and I want them to follow her because I really do believe that like Leobin would not send all of them to their death. And if he wanted Starbuck dead, she'd be dead, right? Like he kept her for five months that he'd, he'd want her dead. So to me, I'm like, yes, go to the base stars, help save them, follow them, help them do this, do that. But I get from their perspective that that is just asinine, that they're like, are you kidding me? Like, literally, we've been doing nothing for 56 days or whatever. And now it's like we have to rendezvous with the fleet. And if we don't, they're going to assume that we're dead. Um, I, I I don't think Adama would necessarily do that. Sending Hilo, Athena, Gaeta, Hot Dog. Like, there's a lot of people that he sent out there that, like, I'm pretty sure he wants back. I think they might have volunteered. I'm not quite sure how that happened. But I, I don't think that he would just kind of be like, well, they're dead. Move along. Uh, that doesn't sound like an Adama move necessarily. Um, but the fact that Hilo was the voice that was saying, like, we're not doing this. I have to relieve you of duty. And she relieves him of duty and then says, Gaeta, you're my new XO. Like, Gaeta was going to do it. And Gaeta's probably even more so. Like, nah, I'm good. Um, I like the way that she handles mutinies much better than Admiral Kane. Um, and, you know, Adama hasn't killed anyone. For that, but he might. Um, but like, you know, Kara didn't pull out her gun. She didn't threaten anything other than you're relieved of duty. Um, I like her way much better, but it is not helping her. Now, the fact that she had Leah been in her quarters and they were painting together and they were having that weird moment, like Sam was like, pow, I don't blame him. But I do think that Leah Bin is the key to finding Earth. And I hate saying that because I think Leobin is, and I keep saying Leah Bin, but Leobin is. A stupid pronunciation. Anyway, that's his name. Um, I don't like him and I hate that we have to trust him. Just like, like, I don't love Gaius. And uh, there's sometimes where I'm just like, no, trust Gaius. And there's other times where I'm like, why are you trusting Gaius? So like, I'm all over the place as well. I'm fairly hypocritical critical most of the time. But I feel like Leobin is gross, creepy. He reminds me of a used car salesman. Like there's not like a lot of redeeming qualities. And maybe when I get to the end of the series, I'll be like, oh, well, I get it. Yeah, okay. But uh, I, I know that he is the key to getting to the Cylons and getting us to Earth. And I hate that. It doesn't sit well with me at all. So uh, going into this next episode, uh, I don't know if there's a fight, if there's an argument, if there is... <sighs> some way that they can still jump to the base stars because the we found out that the base star was attacked but they're you know kind of adrift um they weren't destroyed there's no resurrection ship um that they can get to but they need the demetrius uh to kind of lead them and i don't know like do they just like like i don't know throw a tug line onto the the base star and ftl it back to the fleet and just be like whoa 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 these are our friends. Like, and then they're going to go like, like, let's go to Earth. And, you know, Adama is going to be like, are you kidding me? Absolutely not. So I don't know how this is going to work. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Because I definitely know the president will be like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> um, But I, 
I don't know what the right call is. And then I love that the fact that they, I hope they had a plan story-wise. I know that they didn't necessarily have a, uh, a plan for the final five, but story-wise, they feel like they did have a plan to eventually get to places. And I think that they're kind of giving us clues on how to get there. But oh, psh, I'm normally really good at figuring out storylines and how we're heading places. And uh, to me, there's no, there's there's not a clear path right now other than Leobin, which is why I, I like lean so heavily on like, stop like disobeying Starbucks, just do what she says. I totally get why they're not. I'll just throw that out there. Now we had, oh gosh, some great acting out of Aaron Douglas. Um, Chief, Chief has gone through it. You know, like he's totally changed his appearance. Um, his job is different. He's just all over behavior. Like he was going to off himself because like he could not deal with everything. And, you know, we, we saw that with Boomer. And it's maybe not necessarily for the same reason, but it is the same. It's unable to to handle the truth of the situation, and how to move forward in that, while also kind of reconciling the past, especially with Callie. And, and how do you move forward? Uh, you're stuck in a ship in which you've been relieved of your duty. And, you know, he shaved his head. And I don't I don't really know what that was about. It might have had something to do with another part on another show, uh, whatever. But I... I Sometimes when somebody cuts their hair, you know they're going through it. It's like when a girl cuts her own bangs, she's dealing with things. Um, so I think a whole head shaving scene would have been perfect, but we didn't get it. No big deal. Um, but, you know, him kind of like going and like fighting with Gaius and then Gaius coming to him and apologizing. I don't know if Gaius is sincere. I, I truly believe that when Gaius does things, like he does think that it's like... It's always in his best interest, but it's always for the greater good. He did not have to go to Chief and apologize to Chief. That does not serve Gaius at all. Maybe, I don't know what the future holds for those two together in any way, shape, or form, but like Gaius did not have to go to Chief, and he did not have to say those things about Callie, and he did not have to try to like, you know, give Chief any sort of comfort over the scenario or situation. And so to me, I'm like, well, that's not self-serving at all, unless... He knows something we don't know, or he wants Chief's help for something in the future. That I don't know. In the moment, it felt genuine. Um, and, you know, I always praise James Callis, but like, he's just, he's always just so good. <sighs> so is Aaron Douglas playing Chief. We only got like one little snippet from Ty. That sucks. Um, we got a whole lot of Tori and, you know, Tori is fully embracing the Cylon within um, at least what she thinks a Cylon should be. I, I don't know if she really knows. It seems like she's emulating Six a little bit, but kind of in a more way disturbed way. Um, I, I, I don't... I don't know if she's ever going to come clean to Chief. If I'm her, I don't. I would never. Um, but, you know, I, I do feel like she will protect Chief. So as long as Chief doesn't know... You know, he, she has his protection a little bit. Um, I, I think, I don't know if she told Ty. I wouldn't tell Ty if I were. I wouldn't tell anybody. I'd die with that secret and then get resurrected and <laughs> move on. <laughs> oh, Tori is definitely the surprise of the entire show because she was kind of like, not even a side character. She was a rando character. And I, I would always see her name because I have a friend whose name is Reka. And like every time I'd see her name, I'm just like, oh, she's in this episode. And it might be for a very fleeting moment. And it was never anything that had a lot of depth to it. And now we're learning so much about Tori. But Tori is a Cylon and not Tori, the person that she was before she found out she was a Cylon. So like, you know, based off of what I do know, she seems like she was like such an upstanding person. And she always wanted to kind of, I don't want to say do the right thing. She wanted to win. She was going to, it's so funny that she was trying to help the president win the election against Gaius, and now she's banging Gaius. It's wild. It's wild. The whole gods, no gods thing, like, you know, like, uh, I'm firmly in the position of there's no gods, but, like, these people need comfort when they're going through all of this. Everybody in this fleet has had trauma some way, somehow, and if them following Gaius and him not doing anything that, like, incites violence or, uh, you know, like a, 
like all of a sudden we're going to praise the Cylons, stuff like that. Like as long as it's bringing people comfort and that seems to be what it's doing, I think that's great. That's what it's there for, you know, it is, is, is to be a source of comfort. Um, I don't know where it's going because we're so early in this season that it could literally skew off of a path and it could be very dangerous. So keeping my eye on that situation. We didn't get any updates with Adama and the president. We didn't see Lee at all. Um, so I, I'm guessing because it was a to be continued that we're going to jump right off with Starbuck and maybe a little bit with Chief. I am 100 percent OK with that. But I would like to go back to the base star and see what's happening with our with our girl. Uh, well, Caprica is on Galactica. So but, you know, the ones we do like <laughs> and how they're handling things. Uh, I, 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 I want I want to see I want to see the result and I want to see what they're thinking, what they're going through. Um, so hopefully hopefully we get some tea. But uh, I am joined by my friend Pino Grige, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a nice little BSG night just between me and you and the rest of the internet. So guys, let's get into it. Faith. Oh, cool. <laughs> Maybe this is a drinking episode for me. <laughs> Captain Thrace, as Exo of the Demetrius, I'm hereby relieving you of command. And you know if Hilo's saying it, it's because you're nuts. You're acting crazy. Look at his eyes. He's sad that he even has to do it. You son of a bitch. I'll do it myself. Hey, what the hell are you doing, Carl? Stand down! Uh, I know, I know. Uh, oh, yeah, Athena. Like, oh, yeah, I go. Order the Marine Guard to the control room. She could definitely snap that neck. And you'll be going back to Galactica as mutineers. How do you think that the Admiral is going to sort through that? That's I did not think about that. Mr. Gata, reset the FTL for the first jump back to the fleet. <sighs> right away, sir. I like how Hilo's just ready to face the music, though. Gato, the jump! Whoa, Anders! No, oh! Oh! Who just got shot? Oh my god, he just shot Gata? Holy shit, this went fucking off the rails. <gasps> what the frack? I need a med kit! Get away from it. it! Look at Kara going right to Gata, though. <gasps> oh, <gasps> ugh. <gasps> what the frack? Like, I can deal with surgeries in people's mouths, but not I'm like that. Her. This is gonna hurt. Ready? It already <laughs> hurts. Oh, you fucking bitch! Ah! Ah! <clears throat> Oh. Probably aluminum chloride to stop the bleeding. I'm gonna take Leoben back to the base ship, see if the story checks out. You insane? The two of you alone. She's not going alone. I'm oh. Going with her. Yeah, no, I like that plan. This better. is crazy, but I need you. What? <laughs> I need someone that speaks their language. If yep. This is a trap. I want to know about it. It's fair. Hell yeah, let the Cylon go. Whoa. We'll be waiting here till the clock runs out. And then we jump. Chaos! So much chaos. There's been so much yelling and fighting and infighting. And just, I mean, Celix just like repeatedly saying Cylon. <laughs> it's rough. Doesn't she have a thing for Anders? Boy, wouldn't she be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> At least the worst is over. Two more deluxe and treatments, and you will be over the hump. And I'm going to need oh. you to really keep an eye on things until then. That is not a great looking bald cap. I'm just going to throw it out there. Well, I didn't ask for volunteers. Look, I don't give a frack what the rest of them think. You've been kicking ass since day one. You say you can find Earth. I want to be there when you do. Oh, that's beautiful. I don't know who you are, but thanks. Doesn't look familiar. Leoben, if you screw any of these people over, I will kill you myself. I don't know how I do that, but... Can you feel it? Stop it. The anticipation. Stop it. Oh, and Anders is going back. They're going in with way more Cylons than they think. Jump. Multiple contacts, oh. all quadrants. Oh, wow. 
Oh, look at the inside of that base star. Organic. The frackers won't give me any more fun. <laughs> Got any anesthetic? Just get them numb in the area. You promise me something? Anything. Don't let Cuddle take my leg. <gasps> that is the least of your worries, Felix. This is it. This is the place. I can hear it. <gasps> it's back. The unstruck music vibrates in all of us. Few can hear it. Kara's one of the few. Got okay, a course for why? us. Give me the ship. Oh, she's gonna take it in by force, like the force. Star Wars. Sorry, different media. Forgive me. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> the comet. It wasn't a comet. It was the base star. It's the ship. Oh wow. It is a base star. Incoming right too high. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, why? Why? Just debris? No one's fire ring at them. Did they just get hit? It, are not. they on the base star already? Hey, hey, no, no, no. Take it easy. Care. Everybody made it okay. You're gonna be fine. Oh, that raptor got fracked up. So dope! I love seeing the inside of the base stars. You're gonna turn around and see your your friends. Get the frack away from me. <gasps> Too many. Tina now. You can wear the uniform like you're one of them. She is one of them. The sixes have made one mistake after another. They have to be stopped before they get the rest of us killed. Be stopped? Really, the sixes? You guys make me sick. Why? Oh. Because you pick your side and you stick. Otherwise, you'll never have anything. No love, no family. No life to call your own. Good you guys girl. help me or get the hell out of my way. At least they all have clothes on this time. That was rather uncomfortable. Hello. Oh. Oh, great. Now, the president. She stuck me three times today. <laughs> Thankful she hasn't put a catheter in you. Mm. And I'm sure it isn't helping listening to Gaius Baltar. No, 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 don't touch that. The frat do you think you are? <laughs> Leave me alone! She needs comfort. She knows she's dying. Anders, put your hand on it. See what's happening. And execute jumps from the raptor. Pull the hybrid offline? Absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Touch it. Touch Never it. been done on an operational ship. Final five! <laughs> like the ship just totally lights up from it. That'd be amazing. We started the interface. Take me to this hybrid. Anders, you're on me. Ah! I'd be better if I stay here. <sighs> We're this close. This close! Barrelay, I don't ever remember seeing you before, but I like you. Easy. Oh. You can't blame her. You were on your cover cup. You were part of the resistance. You killed me. Oh. Watched me drown, kicking and thrashing like I was some kind of an insect. Ah, oh, the memories. Happy to pull you down again. Oh. oh. Come on, Six, grow up. Do you want to live or what? Oh, okay. Just punch her really hard in the face. Whoa. Oh, whoa, what happened? What happened? What happened? No. You killed her. What? Fuck, you killed her! Six, you dumbass! Sam, put the gun down you now! You got it! Sam, no fucking way! She just killed Beverly! Sam! Put the gun down. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the best thing. You're on their turf. We are trying to help these people. Mm -hmm. Athena, I know please don't kill her. her too. She's been through trauma. Maybe she needs to go. Can't be re-downloaded to experience it over and over again. Go! 
fuck! Damn it! <sighs> it's a mercy. It's a mercy. No resurrection ship. You understand? She's just as dead as your friend. Is that enough human justice for you? Blood for blood? That sucks. That sucks so bad. Yeah, Anders. <laughs> Welcome to the fray. Yikes. Madam President, I wanted to apologize for before. I, I have good moments and bad. I mean, when you're dying, yeah, that happens. This is for me. I hope it's not too gaudy. No, this is beautiful. For her head? Thank you, it's beautiful. What color are you hoping for when it grows back in? Um, well, mm. I was thinking maybe blue. Nice royal blue, change of base. When my sister lost her hair, it, she had long, thick, brown, curly hair, and it came back straight and light brown. All these things at once and many more. Not because it wishes harm, but because it likes violent vibrations to change constantly. The children of the one reborn shall find their own country. No ceremonies are necessary. Huh. <laughs> Sometimes I have no idea what a hybrid is even talking about, but I know it's important. Why do you listen to her? I had an experience that made me rethink all my preconceptions. Mm. What kind of experience? I felt it, this presence hovering all around me. It said, don't be scared, Emily. I'm with you. I felt the cool breeze coming from the water, the spray from the bow. There's a power that we can't begin to understand. And he's giving her comfort. No ceremonies are necessary. I don't understand. No ceremonies are necessary. The city devours the land. You can't hurry her. People devour the city. Don't expect the fate of two great races to be delivered easily. Oh, fair enough. Hope soaring to slaughter all their best against our hulls. Oh my god, there's only four hours left though, Leoben. Come on, hybrid. Give us some goods. I mean, would Hilo leave Athena behind? Well, I don't want you to lose your leg either, Gata, but I also don't want you to die. But you are a spark of God's fire. Core update complete. Frack! Unplug the damn thing. Let's get the frack out of here. Going active. Execute. I think it's coming. Uh, End of life. Oh! Stop! Oh! What do you want from me? Please. Uh, touch her. Hold her hand. Do something. Oh, eye contact. Jesus. The dying leader will know the truth of the opera house. The missing three will give you the five who have come from the home of the 13th. You are the harbinger of death, Carathrace. You will lead them all to their end. What does that mean, though, harbinger of death? Lead them to their end? Like the end of their search? Probably not the end of their life. The harbinger of death. Maybe, maybe to stop people from dying? What a scene! Oh, she was something to behold in the pit of a classroom and her, her students. Her students loved her. They'd, they'd walk through fire for her and then to see this woman who seemed so eternal. She withered away and I find myself having to change her diaper because she couldn't even. There was no gleaming field of Elysium stretched out before her. There was this black abyss. I'm sorry. <sighs> you 
here. You're still searching. You. <laughs> oh. Doc Hoddle! It's burning. wasn't the right episode to drink. Forgive me. Give her comfort, please. Come on. Oh. It's okay. What? The home of the 13th tribe of humans. And the five is your final five silent models. Anders? And the missing three is the model you boxed. We're looking at the faces of the five. Deanna. Oh my god, she's gonna recognize she's Anders! Gonna recognize him. Oh! Hey. She didn't know! She didn't know! She almost killed him! Oh, Anders, I think your moment of truth is coming. If it's not Anders, then it's gonna be nuts if it's Ty. Yeah, you gotta prepare yourself, buddy. Oh my god. <sighs> oh, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion right now. Is she at the river? <sighs> is she on Star Trek? With the... thing? What is she, a Romulan? Look again, she's there. <laughs> oh, one could only hope. Oh, is that her mom? Show up Andreas, show up Andreas, show up Andreas. Damn it! Come on, Andreas. Show the board something. Is green. I know, baby, I'm sorry. She's gone. Execute jump in five. Four! Andreas. Andreas. Yes! Greatest contact! Hold the count! Holy Spacious shit! colonial idea. I've got a comm signal, but it's really weak. Speakers! Demetrius Athena! Demetrius Athena! That's who he needed to hear. God, it's good to hear your voice. A little Copy late. That, Hilo. Mission accomplished. And let's go home. Should you jump first and then let them know that you're coming? Because I feel like Galactica would be like, poo poo. Oh. I need to talk to you. Yeah? Confession of love, maybe? You both had the same dream. It means. Don't say nothing. What? There's a connection. I believe in that. Kilo, Athena, Kata. Will I ever see those kids again? I think you think so. You have faith in it, right? Look at me. I'm right here. Right here. We're going to find it. Yeah, you are. Earth. Together. I used to think 
it was such a bad dream. <laughs> yep. What made you change? Faith. You? <laughs> you made me believe. <laughs> such a beautiful scene. Oh. oh, I love episodes like this. Oh, my God. Can I just say that it's I don't want to say that it's rare that we get like episodes that are full of beauty. But there are some moments, you know, the president and Adama in that last scene. I love that. My God, any time that they have their moments together, I'm so excited for the performances that we get, but it's so meaningful and it's so deep. And it's not just like, like an, I love you and, you know, we'll get through this together and we're going to hold hands. It's, it's very much this kinship, this friendship that they've built, this relationship, whatever it actually is, is just so meaningful and beautiful. But then even like the moment with, with Anders and I don't know what to call her, Boomer, um, but uh, the, the other Boomer, <laughs> Boomer go bye-bye, um, the, 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 they had this moment where, like, you know, he took her hand and he comforted her in death. And the president was comforting uh, this other woman, which I don't believe we got her name, but, like, you know, comfort her in death. And I think she's on, she's got to be on a Star Trek show. I don't know if it's Deep Space Nine. I feel like. Oh, God, it's going to bother me. But I know she's got the little like ridges either on her nose or on her forehead. You could go down her forehead and her nose. She's not a Klingon, right? They changed the way Klingons look in Discovery. I'm not very thrilled with that. I think they actually also changed that in the movies, the, the Chris Pine movies. But us OG people know what a Klingon looks like. But I, I don't know if she's Romulan. Shit, I don't know, but like that scene between her and Mary was just beautiful. My God, so well acted. But you know, th I think uh, the, the the episode name is Faith, and I believe personally, as somebody who is not religious, that faith is a lot about comfort, and and in whatever that may be, whatever gets you to the point of not having fear when you die. Um, is comfort, whether it is faith or whether it is just the last vision of you being around the person that you love, or maybe it's, you know, being peaceful and going in your sleep and not even know that it happened, but it, it's comfort. And a lot of this was based on comfort. Now, granted, the episode started with freaking chaos. Gata got shot. He might lose his leg. He could possibly die. Well, like, what, if Kyle's like, I have to take the leg, like, he's just going to be like, let me die. I don't want to live without a leg. Like, yeah, that's hard for a short period of time. Believe me, like, I always tell people in dentistry that, like, they think that, like, if they have bad teeth, they just get them pulled, they get dentures. It's a whole new set of teeth. And dentures are not a replacement for the teeth you have. It is a replacement for no teeth. Just as a prosthetic leg is a replacement for no leg, right? But I still think that over time you learn to use these that you, like, I, I think if Gaia had a prosthetic leg, he'd be fine. It would take some time, but it's better than dying, personally. And I don't know if the next episode we're comforting him through something, whether it is facing that reality or dying. God, I hope not. That would, that would suck to lose Gaia. Like, he, I'm not, I'm not a Gata fan. Like, I'm not wearing a shirt saying I love Felix Gata. But I, I also think that he's a great character. And from, like, last season to this season, he's proven to be very valuable um, and, and very necessary to the story. That would suck. That would really, really suck. That's not very poetic for me to say. Like, oh, that would suck. But, like, it's true. Like, like it, it would very much, at this point in the story, to lose anybody. And especially, oh no, I forgot her name. And granted, I don't think they said her name for four seasons. And then we get it in this and she happened to have killed that six. And she wanted to volunteer. She was part of the mission. She wanted to go, you know, it wasn't like Celix who's like fracking Cylon, you know, but like she was there for a purpose and she wanted to get it done. And she believed in Kara and Kara's vision and wanted to see it through. I think that's a beautiful thing. She went there on faith. 
And, you know, Six killing her was just like, I get it. The The difference is, is that you got to be reborn and have a new life. She doesn't get that. And no, no longer does she get that. And like, I feel like one, it is a little bit of an act of mercy because, you know, we saw Gina on Pegasus and what she went through. And then she ends up, you know, detonating the nuke. And a lot of that, those memories you don't want to live with. And there's no way to really talk somebody through that in this scenario. In real life, you can. And it's really hard. So I get the mercy killing of Six. But also, it is a little bit eye for an eye in this scenario. Um, Leoben, like, really believing that that Kara needs to talk to the hybrid. And I don't know what harbinger of death means, necessarily. I don't know if it's death of the old way, if it's death of the human race as we know it, and now we are, you know, uh, working with the Cylons and, and, and we have an alliance. Um, we already have two half Cylon babies, only one that we know of, you know what I mean, that everyone else knows of. Me and you, we're in on the secret. But like, like there, there is a way for them to coexist together, but like after a mass genocide... There's bound to be people that are just going to see any six and shoot her, see any Leoben and shoot him, see, see any three. Like, and, and they were talking about that with the hybrid, that it was like, uh, Deanna is going to recognize Anders, maybe, because she's like, I didn't know. I didn't know. And she's the only one that I can think of that had direct contact with Anders. And if, she, if they unbox her and they resurrect her and she looks at Anders and she's like, I didn't know. And he's revealed to be one of the Cylons that is from the original 13th colony. I don't know if that, that's a Cylon from the original 13. Maybe the 13th colony already has an alliance with Cylons. Maybe those five models are already on Earth. Holy shit, I never thought of that. Wow, that could be a possibility that they are already on Earth and they have already created an alliance with humans. <gasps> I'm, 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 it's fanfic. It is, it, it is, it is funny little gal reacts fic. That sounds weird. Anyway, 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 Deanna remembering Anders, first of all, would be like, you would see Starbuck just short circuit. She would, she would have a moment. And him saying, look, because I thought, you know, the three, when they were talking about three, I thought they were talking about Ty, Tori, and Chief. But they were talking about the boxed three. Or were they? Oh, my gosh. It's all a mystery. And it's all. Oh, my God. They're trying to decipher the hybrid and what she was talking about leading into everything. I feel like some of that was important and, and like she's talking about like relays or something with the FTL drive <gasps> circuit seven. Is that what she said? <sighs> like, and maybe it's all nonsense and all, she might just be talking about like, you know, just uh, like she might be the geek squad, right. For, for the entire base star. And she might just be saying like, check that circuit. Oh my gosh, the FTL. But then she's just like, Kara Thrace, harbinger of death. Um, she will lead. The human race to their end, end of line. <sighs> to the end of their line, to the end, which might be Earth. Harbinger of death is that she might be the death of the reality that they currently live in and, and that she's forming this alliance. And I don't know. She's not the end of the human race. I don't think we get to Earth and all of a sudden it's just like humans are dead. Cylons win. Sucker. <laughs> Sorry, Starbuck. You know, you just, you've had a shit life. We figure you're the one, you know, it won't affect you nearly as much as it would affect somebody who's great. I don't know. I think, I don't even know what I think. I don't even know what I think. There's so much that happened in this episode. It's such a good episode. <laughs> and, you know, fantastic acting from Katie. I just have to say that the, 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 the chaos at the beginning and, and, the way Katie can play Starbuck so improved from the first season. And I, granted, I couldn't jump in there and do it. So, like, I don't know if I'm definitely the person that could 
uh, make a critique on acting and say like, oh, you know, she wasn't great in the first season. And now she's so much better. But I feel like she is. I feel like she can really relay more with just an attitude and with her with her eyes and just her facial expression and everything. Um, and, and I'm, I'm really proud of Katie. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really proud of her, but even like Leobin, this is the first episode where I was like, the dude's not a hundred percent a creeper. He is a guy that was based on faith and, and what he believed Starbuck to be, you know, the whole destiny. I don't know if there's like a prophecy or what. I don't, I don't know how he got the information to believe this, if it was just based off of a dream if he heard a hybrid say something, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but it's like the first time where I, like when he and Anders were taking care of Kara in the Raptor and they weren't having a moment where they were like fighting with each other and Anders is like, don't touch her. And like, you know, Leobin's just like, ah, oh, destiny. Like it was like the first time where I felt like he really does care about Starbuck, but also like... Like, it's not in a creepy way. It's like, we have to protect her because she's important. Not like, we have to protect her because I got this crush on her. Or, you know, like, 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 I want you to, like, say I love you and kiss me and like that whole weird scenario. I don't know what that was about. Um, Hopefully there's a resolution on that because if not, that was just a creeperly open and I'm happy. Well, I don't, this is the same Leoben, isn't it? F. (sighs) <sighs> I still don't love him. Still not my favorite character. Okay, so nothing really with Chief. We got a little bit with Tori with the president, which I feel like she's very supportive still of the president. She still cares about her. And that's very not Cylon. So I think Tori, you know, she still kind of maybe struggles with her Cylon identity, but she very much still is human. And I think she still very much cares about the president. Um, now, the president saying anything that comes across my desk, you keep an eye on. I don't know if we have to worry about Zarek necessarily. Um, I feel like that scene was there for a reason. And I'm not here to harp on somebody's uh, makeup either, but definitely not the best bald cap I've ever seen. Just saying, I know she had to like show that she's been through like the chemo treatments or whatever they call it. Um, not the best. It was very distracting especially how perfect and smooth it was. There was no veins. There's like no leftover hairs. Like I've seen people go through cancer and it is not a perfectly smooth bald head. We're not talking Lex Luthor here. We're, We're talking about somebody who's like sick. And, you know, a lot of that I felt like very triggering to me, especially with my sister having gone through chemotherapy, cancer, withering away and dying. You know, uh, a lot of that was was like really hitting to me, you know, talking about her hair. Her hair started to grow back after chemotherapy and it was like light blondish brown and it was straight. And she had thick, curly, dark hair. So it's like like it, it, it really I felt that, you know, and. And just kind of uh, the comfort that she wanted in the end and the comfort they want in the end and that they're trying to show in the end. Now, look, I don't know if there's an afterlife. I don't know where we go when we die. And I'm of the boat that it's just over. And it was beautiful while I had it. And now it's gone. But I know that not everybody feels that way. And I, I love that they touch on you know, like the gods, like how ridiculous they may be and how you might take something very literal and something metaphorical. But like at the end of the, at the, at the end of the episode, at the end of the day, at the end of the line, <laughs> it's what comforts you. And I'm okay with that. A hundred percent. If, if that's what you need and that's what you believe, that's beautiful to me. Um, it, it's not what I believe. And I, I really think belief shouldn't be like, this is one way and all the thousands of other gods that people believe in are the wrong way. I think that like the thing that like you believe in, the comfort that that you find in it, the faith that you have in something, that's a very personal experience. Um, And that's why I really don't like when people push their religious stuff on other people is because religion is a very personal thing. Um, And and I, I, I very much in this episode, I still believe the same thing is that like, you know, what finds you comfort is the thing that like takes you to the beyond or after. Um, I think that like we're just energy that is, you know, dispersed into the atmosphere. 
And uh, some people might call that a spirit. They might call that the afterlife. You know, that's not what I call it, but that doesn't mean that you're wrong. That doesn't mean that I'm wrong. It's just what gives us comfort. Beautiful episode. My God. I can't wait for the next one because the, the unboxing of the threes and Anders having that moment with Boomer or I don't know, was she an eight with eight? I don't know if she got it. Natalie. I think they actually named her in this. No, Natalie was the brown haired six. I don't know, but I, I loved that Athena had that moment where she was like, you know, when you believe in something, you stick with it. You're not wishy-washy. You're not fair weather. You don't go from one side to the other. When it gets too hard, all of a sudden you're like, uh, we can't do this. I don't believe in it. We have to stop her. And that's kind of the same thing that was happening with Starbuck is that like, you know, everyone was trying to stop her. Starbuck is the six in a different scenario, right? And I wish Athena could see it from that point of view. And, and maybe she was, and maybe, you know, Hilo is the key to getting Athena to really follow Starbuck over to the base star, but look where we are. We were right. Leoben was right. Ugh. Starbuck was right. So far. I don't know, because they said that the final five will lead us to Earth, or the final five know the way to Earth. So that means Xander. Xander. <laughs> Anders. Xander's my editor. Maybe he knows the way to Earth as well. Um, he's seen the series, so I'm pretty sure he does. <laughs> no spoilers. Uh, but but Anders might know. Ty might know. Tori might know. Chief might know. And whoever the elusive last one is, the one that has not been revealed. I'm really not thinking that it's Starbuck. I never really thought it was Starbuck. Like, she was on my list, but, like, it's just... Highly unlikely, I think. I really wanted Anders to like touch that slime pad, whatever it is. I'm not, I'm, I don't know what it is. I call it a slime pad. That's not correct, but still. Um, gosh, there's so many things that could have happened and they didn't. And I feel like we're on the precipice of greatness. Guys, if you want to watch the full length reaction to this episode, it will be available on my Patreon and up to four episodes early. But in the meantime, you better like, subscribe and leave a comment down below. You feed the algorithm and that helps me, that helps Xander, that 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 just helps the channel in general and I appreciate you for doing that, but no spoilers. But like, woo, what an episode. First of all, shocking that Gaeta got shot. I hope he doesn't lose his life. I hope he also doesn't die. Uh, the hybrid having that moment of revealing all of that information was delicious tea that was spilled. Thank you so much. But like, you know, the, the whole moment with. Ah, I can't remember her damn name. But like, I, I didn't expect her to die necessarily, but I definitely didn't expect that that six to die. That was like very shocking to me. Uh, but like, what did you guys think of this entire episode? Oh, my God. There's like so many things that like, you know, talking about death and the comfort in, 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 in crossing the river. And then you have Gaius just in the background, no physical form of Gaius, but like, he's always present. Right. But like, you know, just, I don't even know what to ask you guys, but like a, like a general, general feeling of this episode, especially the episode name faith. I was like, Oh, mama's going to need a wine. I didn't even drink a whole glass. So, or whatever the dosage was that I gave myself, but like, like when you saw the title <laughs> of the episode, were you worried? I've heard a lot of people in the comments say that like when the religious aspect took kind of full steam that they kind of fell away from it. And that doesn't make me not want to watch the show. Um, I just like a balance. And I feel like we haven't had, we've had like a lead up of the religious stuff. And I feel like this was like the perfect lead up to it is that like faith isn't necessarily gods and gods. And I feel like the discussion that we had was wonderful and it was beautiful. But how do you guys feel about this episode? Because I could see how some people would be like, Ugh. like, and, you know, maybe me three months ago, I would have been that way. And I think now I'm kind of like, no, like, let's, let's see what it's about. But like the, the reveal from the hybrid, how did you feel about that? <laughs> I'm excited. I'm so excited to get into the next couple episodes. I, I don't really know sometimes what to ask you guys because you know how the series ends and you know what's coming up and you know the story of getting to the end. So sometimes I, f I find myself just going like, how'd you like the episode? But like, seriously, this one with the title and, 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 and the contents of it, 
How did you feel specifically about this episode? Because I really liked it. I really did. And and not only was it emotional, but it was exciting. And, and we were kind of like on a precipice of an all-out mutiny. And like, I love Hilo for being like, I'm going back to the fleet. And if we're mutinous, the Admiral will deal with us. Like he was totally accepting his fate because he definitely thought it was the right thing. Yeah, uh, this episode was chock full of just fantastic moments. Some space shit, not a whole lot, but like still good stuff. I really liked it. So guys, come back here for the next episode. We'll find out uh, where, what if, if, if Anders knows the way to Earth or if Deanna's like, I don't know who you are. Who are you? And then she sees like Ty and is like, oh, there you are. I don't know. I don't know. That was really rude. That was really rude. You know what? Pino agrees is still hitting a little hard. Not not as hard as if I finished the entire glass, but it's definitely. <laughs> it's bringing out the Cylon in me. Okay, guys, I gotta go. Bye. I'll see ya.